All right, so in this video, we're gonna show you how to do VBA code and actually have a screen or a web page pulled up inside of your HMI application. Uh, this is uh, basically used, uh, we, we've shown you on the last video how to do that externally, like pull up a external uh, Google Chrome using a shell. Um, we showed you how to do that. Now this is gonna be doing it internally in your HMI app. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and pull and add the, uh, it's going to pull up a, a separate screen so what we need to do is we're going to come over here and currently this is my screen right now I'm going to come over here just to, so I get my specifications correctly I'm going to copy this screen I'm going to duplicate it and we're going to rename it VBA code VBA uh, and then we'll call this screen just for the simple uh, simplicity of what we're doing here now I'm going to come over here to my screen that I just created none of this is important again this is just showing you that I'm using the same parameters are, are the same not the same parameters but the same uh, backplane and display and everything like that instead of actually wasting time doing that what I'm gonna do is actually just copy that and duplicate it right so that saves you a little bit of time and effort now keep in mind for the sake of things we're gonna get rid of our property panel real quick and we're gonna see our screen okay so I want you to look currently in the VBA code for the screen we have absolutely nothing brand new right it's a brand new actual page all right so in this page what I want to do is I'm going to grab I'm going to come over here highlight my screen first come over here to objects and we go down to active X controls and this we're going to grab a web browser so let's go ahead and drag this screen all the way across okay as soon as we do that, we're going to pull in our, our ActiveX insert, right? So this is where we're going to come in and select our Microsoft Web Browser, okay? Come down here to this, and we're going to go to Microsoft Web Browser. We're going to click OK. This is going to draw it out for us. We're going to come over here and shrink this down just a little bit, okay? And make sure this is full screen. All right, so now let's... For the sake of what we're doing, being this is an actual HMI screen, let's add in a close button. So real quick, not to waste time, because I know this is about VBA code, but let's add in a close button where the action is going to be uh, abort. And what we're going to do is we're going to abort uh, this uh, this actual screen right here. So not active. We'll just come in here and add this uh, as abort this one. So abort me. And then we'll we'll name this close, so close screen, and we'll put that as a font of 12. So real easy, real simple on how to add a close button. Uh, again, that's not really the focus of the video, but that's what we're doing. All right, so I want you to under, now come over here. We need to to actually get our our property panel back up because we need to turn on our actual. Um, so right here, we can go to display. Okay, but we need to come over here and actually change our properties in a couple different things. Like in inside of our ActiveX, we need to change our properties. Now, going to connections, we're not going to use that. We can go to common and change the name of this to like web, and that does change the name, but that still doesn't help us with actually pulling up VBA code. So we're going to come over here to our view. We're going to go to property panel right here, and that's going to pull up our property panel. Okay, so then we. We're going to click and highlight over our ActiveX. We're going to come over here and make sure that now we've changed the name. So you, you can see that we've changed the name. It's using a web browser control. What we want to do now is change the exposed to VBA. We want to change that to yes. Okay, so we're well not yes, but VBA control. Um, in that atmosphere too, keep in mind if you just made the screen or you just made the ActiveX, uh, sometimes it does prompt you uh, that it won't allow you to change this. You'll change, you use the drop down and you'll change it to VBA control and it may pop back on, pop back up to natural function. What you need to do at that point is just save the screen and close the screen out. Close the screen out and then come back in and add, you know, open the screen back up and then it will allow you to change to VBA code. So see right there, it goes to not exposed. Then it will allow you to change that. So just keep in mind, if you do have that problem where you, you can't change it to VBA control, that's how you do that, okay? 
All right, so um, that's just something I've ran into in the past, so I just want to make sure you, you're well aware of that. And, then, and why we change the name is so we can understand uh, what this is. So this is web page. Let's just call that web page VBA. Uh-oh, VBA. All right, so now we've changed the name, and that's that, um, that's that connection right here, web page VBA. That's the name of that. So hopefully that tied everything in together for everybody. All right, so we don't want to... in now, if you've seen the last video where we pulled up a web page externally, we used the element that we were doing. So the VBA code right here, we pulled up the element. We don't want to do that on this. We want the actual screen background. And why do we want the screen background? Because we're going to actually use the animation. Okay, so we're going to go to screen. We're going to highlight on the back of the screen. We're going to go to VBA code. And then we want to pick the section of the screen that says display animation start. We're going to drop that down, and that's where we're going to start editing. So keep in mind our actual object name, and our object name was uh, web page uh, VBA, and then we're going to go dot. Okay, so this is why it's highly important to understand the name of what you've named your object. If I would have named it web, then I just type in web dot. Okay, if I named it BBA, if I named it whatever that I named it, this is where this name right here is highly important. This name that you named it right here is highly important. You can just copy this, all right? You can just copy that if you want to, come over here and paste it. Now again, or you can pull it up where you can see it. Just that simple. We'll call it web page, BBA, dot, whatever we're going to do. This gives us many, many different functions, right? In this atmosphere, we're going to go to navigate, okay? And then we're going to get put parentheses, and then we're going to put where we're going to actually go to. So parentheses, and then what we want to do is put in uh, quotes right here, and this is going to give us where we're going to go to. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, we haven't told it where to go to yet. All right, so I'm going to show you how to pull up a simple web page. Uh, this is based upon whatever you like again you could be doing this for a camera system you could be doing it for a drive you could be doing it for like rockwell help files you could be doing it for a lot of different things the important side is this is how you actually would navigate to it so let's go ahead and do this let's pull up chrome and in my environment i'm using chrome i'm going to pull up a simple i um web address that i currently have for um and this is a, going to be an EMBT card. I'm just going to pull this up to show how functional this is. So I'm going to copy this. Normally, what I would do anyway would be pull up the if it's if it's an IP address, I would pull up the actual. I would open up Google Chrome to see if it had a web page. Make sure I go to that web page, copy the URL like I'm doing here, and then go into the the uh, VBA code and paste that in there. Now in this environment, we can close Google Chrome we have the web page we're going to pull up right here and then we're going to hit save that's all you have to do for the the code because we're using an activex display okay so right here this is the activex display now you can test this screen and it should pull up however if it does not test the screen and pull up if it if it somehow comes in and puts in load parameters or whatever the case may be then you could be using parameters on that screen so you're going to need to do that externally all right so one thing i want to highlight is we need a button okay so currently in my hmi system i don't have a button to go to the screen so we need to have a button i'm going to add a simple little button in here like a go to button so let's do that let's go to buttons and let's add a button in here so that we can go to and display so we want to display the new screen that we just added. All right, so we're going to display that, and let's just call this uh, web uh, page. <clears throat> Again, real simple name. Again, the focus of it is not how to make a button. The focus of it is how to actually pull up a web page internally in your HMI application. All right, so we're going to go back to our client now. And in our client, what we're going to do is, being in, in Factory Talk uh, Site Edition, if you make a change, you're going to. If you want it to represent on your screen, you're going to have to refresh your screen. So if you don't have a refresh button, just just jump between screens, and now you can see our buttons here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to push the button, 
and it's gonna pull up directly inside of our HMI application now. now. How cool is that? Again, you could actually have this, again, I, this is fully functional. I can pull up all my stuff, right? I can pull up my processor information. I can pull up everything, fully functional. And again, aborting, go, go right back to our screen. Um, now again, you can have that abort many different ways and, and just have it on top. Like if I wanted to change the, the screen right here to say um, on top, just change the screen properties to say uh, right here would be instead of replace on top. And then the abort, um, as far as the abort, um, how that works, you can go in here. And let's just actually, let's close, let's take the abort to, uh, um, let's just uh, delete that real quick and go to abort. And let's go to abort and let's go to close active window. All right, so now we've changed that. So now if we go back and refresh our screen, come over here. And now if we hit abort, it's gonna just go overlaid. So you see a couple little quick tips on how to, you know, actually navigate and how to change things so that this may be the screen, you don't want the screen to disappear. You just want it to come on top, give you the information and then close it and then you're back to your, your normal settings or whatever the case may be. Just wanna give you a couple little quick tips on how to do that. Again, using um, the web browser, you're going to, and like you can point to a, um, something local inside of your, your actual C drive, or you can actually just do this using uh, HTML, you know, like I said, uh, an IP address, looking it up on Google Chrome, um, or if you're using an Internet Explorer, whatever the case may be, you can look, you know, as long as you have conductivity to pull that up, you can use that VBA code. So again, when it comes down to it, um, this is what I've done. I've done this in several different things. I've used it for many different things in the past. I wanted to document it to help everybody else out because again, when it comes down to it, understanding how the VBA code works and what's best for your application um, is gonna be the, the most helpful thing. And, and again, using an ActiveX web browser, right? So again, using this ActiveX web browser made that VBA code so much simpler, right? But when you're using a web browser like this, you need one thing you need to note is that your, um, your, you know, but let's just say your Internet Explorer uh, frame DLL um, is going to your ActiveX that you're currently using is going to have to be matched up with all of your actual client computers. So let's just say your server was at a higher level than your client computers, um, and your DLLs didn't match up, or your whatever your your factory or your uh, ActiveX didn't line up properly, what you can do is make this screen on the lowest one, right? And then like say for instance, you had a client that was a client computer that was on a low a lower DLL. And what you can do is make the screen on that one and then the server that's on a higher level will accept it. So make the actual screen on the lowest one and that will accept it. Or you can update everything, update your ActiveX and it will work just as, just as simple. But when it comes to an IE frame dot DLL, it's kind of hard to do that without updating your a lot of different you know elements. So it's best just to come in here and you know just make it on the lowest one, and then it will work on all of them. That's kind of unfair on my position because I'm using uh, my actual client or my server as my actual client. So just keep that in mind. Hopefully you stuck around and watched the whole video so you get to see how this works. Um, a couple of those quick tips again about the um, you know IE ActiveX um, IE frame dot DLL. Um, that's something that it was hard press and hard learn for me, and I know that can be a, a time saver when you understand how the process works. So again, hopefully that was helpful and it passed on to you how to use uh, VBA code and how to uh, understand how to use a web browser ActiveX function. With that said, uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.